Okay, so on the bench today, this is that silver tone guitar that I got out of the storage locker. I'm going to clean it up. I'm going to try to get it going and uh, shine it all up. So let's get started. Okay, so the first thing I needed to get this thing going was some tuners. It came and didn't have any tuners with it. But I got really lucky on this. Let me get the camera over here. Okay, so I didn't have any tuners. Couldn't find any tuners. I went over to a friend of mine. His name is Brendan. And honestly, it's great having Brendan only two miles up the street from my shop. And uh, he works at the music store right there on um, Baseline and, uh, you know, right on the Tempe Mesa border. And it's actually called the music store. They do a lot in sheet music. But Brendan is the repair guy in the back. And he went through his parts and he found that for me right there. I ended up buying this from him. He has a whole extra bin full of parts like this. And he charged me a whopping five dollars for this part i'm just gonna lay it down in here and uh, find some screws now he told me that this wood is really soft so he said just take a screw and and don't drill this because this wood is so soft you'll end up with nothing so uh, he said just get some of them little screws and just drive them babies home so that's my plan right now let me look through uh, my parts and see if I can see if I can find some screws to install that because that just those things just dropped right in there they look like they were made for this guitar okay so here's what I dug up out of my tray of tuners so I got some screws here let's just see they all look pretty close to the same so uh I'm going to go ahead and screw those babies down in there. Okay. I'm just going to try to see if I can press them down in there. Okay, drop them. They're in tiny screws. It's okay. Get them started. So there's not much wood up here. Let's see if we can get this one started. Okay, fight it a little, fight me. We're gonna win though. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a little drop of 3-in-1 oil on these without making too much of a mess. And then spin them around a little. Beautiful. Then I'll take a paper towel and just wipe up a little of the excess that's on there. Okay, I think we're good. Okay, so let's look at these frets now. I can feel a little bit of fret sprout, so I have my Stumac fret file. And I can just sort of run along here like this.
just to take that lip off of there. There's a lot of gloss on the neck and paint along the side here. Although I do see a couple of areas where uh, the black paint is coming off of there. So I don't have to, I'm not going to dwell on it too much. But we'll go by, by here and just, just to make it feel a little bit better if somebody wants to play it. Uh, this thing, the borderline, it's kind of a wall hanger collectible type of guitar. But they definitely, you can play these things. We'll see how that goes after I put strings on it. Okay, now that feels better. Now, right in this neighborhood now, I think when this gar guitar was manufactured, uh, they sprayed the varnish over the frets and everything because you can see some of that still on here. So I think what I'm going to do is uh, maybe I'll scrape on a couple of these with a blade real lightly just to get the top. Yeah, I can feel that coming off there. Just to, just to try to scrape a little of that real quick. Okay. Okay, so let's take our fretboard guard. And we're just going to shine these frets up. Now this is basically cosmetically, right? This procedure right here. It's not really, it's not leveling and crowning and all that stuff. This is just taking off the top layer of dirt to shine it up. And it's taking off some of the, the varnish that was originally on this guitar and you know, I don't even know if it was varnish or what they actually used as a clear coat on this, on this neck. You can see it's kind of peeling off here and there. So again, don't judge me too hard. This is just uh, shining it up, making the appearance of these frets nice and shiny so that the guitar looks nice and new. Yeah, so you got a couple little high and low spots. Uh, if it if it makes a guitar, you know, uh, fret out and stuff like that, I would be surprised if it did. Yeah, let's do this now. Uh, got a little bit of uh, furniture polish, and I'm just going to spray this on a rag. And let's just clean the fretboard a little bit. You can see that it has some wear on some of these frets right here and even in the fretboard. So somebody loved this guitar, Joey, I guess. Joey probably played it. And then for some reason he's like, oh man, I'm going to upgrade my tuners. And then he never got around to doing that. Or he bought it out of a Goodwill or something because he loved doing that kind of stuff. My old store, 
uh, the old location of Zim's Guitars uh, was in the uh, same complex as a Goodwill. And I remember that Joey used to always go and, and he'd hit my guitar shop and then he'd hit the Goodwill. All right, so there we go. All right, okay, so that's about as clean as I'm going to get it. So uh, let's go ahead and grab some strings. I think for something like this, which scale length looks like 23 and 5 eighths, 23 and 3 quarters. I think we need to put 10s on it. The 11s would probably be okay because it is a shorter scale. Um, let's let's go with tens. Today's string choice. Okay, today I'm going with S I T Power Wound Nickel, ten through forty six. S I T string. Stay in tune. Okay. Okay, guys, so I want to put strings on it. And, uh, you know, you, sometimes you spend 15 minutes and you use the wrong parts. But what was happening on those tuners was the string, the hole in the shaft that came up through the bottom, it was down in there. It wasn't far enough in. So I had to take those tuners back off. I'm not ashamed to say it. Now what we're going to do is we're going to install these vintage Fender Clouson style and we're going to put these things in there because again on the uh, and on these tuners the string goes right in the end there and you spin it around and so uh, yeah these are going to work I'm not ashamed to say that I tried some other tuners and then I went on all parts and I uh, was looking for the exact tuners that all parts sells and they come in two different sizes the six in a line there's two different sizes all parts does not sell the right size for this guitar so I said well just gonna go in my box of tuners and pick something out of there that is going to fit and it's going to work and so now we're back to installing tuners but these are the like the vintage Clouson style and so uh, yeah a few minutes of this and I'll be able to put strings on it okay so I'm getting some strings on it trying to get her going here I had to take those tuners off that I had and put other tuners on. But uh, that's most likely why the guitar didn't have any tuners on it when I got it out of the locker. He couldn't find good ones that would fit in there. So these things, it just kind of hooks in here and I don't really like this design. But it kind of hooks in there. That. Yeah, they just kind of hang on there, man. They're kind of just hanging on there, but I don't know. Uh, I guess that's how it works. So, uh, yeah, this doesn't really look to be in proper position right now, that bridge. So, I'm going to mess with this a little bit more. And just kind of see what happens here. Yeah, it's really kind of a strange thing. Get a Phillips. Let's see if I can lower this a little. Okay.
Yeah, she's moving around and doing all kinds of kind of weird things to me here. So you guys can probably tell that I haven't messed with one of these. at our string height here. It's pretty high, so I'm gonna, gonna lower these again. Yeah, so these are the tuners I put on there. Vintage clues on. Now I believe I plugged this guitar in uh, a couple weeks ago when it first came in. Joey's old guitar. video right here and I could say hey the guitar is back but since we're all here let's just go ahead and let's take a look at what's going on here Okay. Oh, come on now. Something. Something's going on under here. He's got it all wrapped paper and everything wrapped around everything. Look at that. That is cool. Yeah, you can see how these are hollow inside. I wonder if I should take this off. It's got everything shielded. I don't think that's factory. And I'm not sure I should, I don't know, maybe I should just leave it.
Yeah, I'm thinking maybe I should just leave it, right? Joey knew what he had. Be able to get some spray in there. That's a weird little um, <clears throat> nut that fits on there. It almost looks like it's a one piece where the nut and the washer are one piece. Yeah, look at that thing. It's one of those kind of things. I wonder if I got something I could change that. Does it matter? Oh, it's not Dana left or it's not Silvertone anymore if you change that. Wait, talk about, talk about cutting corners. Look at that, it's one piece, the, like the nut washer is one little piece. Guess I could try to do the same thing to this one. Oh, that one seems on there tight though. Sometimes I'm like, why do I mess with things? There's a chance I could break it. I think I'm going to leave it just like this. Let's check the electronics one more time. Maybe that was able to clean it up a little doing just what I just did there. the volume and this is the tone control Or even 
country. Cool guitar. Yeah. Thanks, man. <laughs> no problem. Thank you.